What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Cold Game Recap. The NBA has a major problem, and I'm here to talk about it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I'm going to be giving a lot of NBA opinions in today's episode. You may disagree. Use that comment section. Let's have a conversation. This community is great, and they can civilly have a conversation. Let's talk about officiating. I have never in my lifetime been a guy to watch a game of my favorite player and be like, God damn it, we lost because of the refs. Even if it is a bad call that could potentially have changed the game, I've never been one to blame the refs for a loss. You know what I'm saying? Even earlier this season, it was the game against the Portland Trailblazers, my Chicago Bulls. Zach Levine got wrapped up. In the moment, I thought he was fouled. The last two-minute reports said he wasn't. I was upset with the call, but at the end of the day, we end up losing because of Damian Lillard is a god and not because of the officiating call. So I've never been the guy to directly look at the referees and say, you are a reason for a loss. Now, that's not... The same as me not being critical because I will 100% be critical of referees. Today in the both of the nasty televised game and even one of the games yesterday, we saw some big, big problems. Let's start off with the first one. Pelicans have this comeback against the Boston Celtics. Overall, with a great game for the fan uh, if you're not a Boston Celtics fan. But the last minute, two minutes of this game felt like an eternity. And you know what? I do like the fact that we can try to get to the point to mo make the most accurate calls. Whose fingertips was it off? Was that really a foul? All these other things. This is good for the game to get a good depiction of a, a fair fight. But there has to be a way for it to happen more rapidly. I can look at the same the same replay and determine in the first run whose hands was it off. But for some reason, these refs got to take five minutes. The last two minutes took about 20 minutes, and I am not exaggerating. Now, me being a diehard NBA slash basketball fan, I'm, I can sit through those 20 minutes. But the casual fan will not. One of the reasons the rating is down because stuff like this. I, can talk, I talk to my pops about it. He doesn't really like what he loves the game of basketball, but he doesn't really like watching the NBA because things like this. It kills the momentum. It kills the speed and it kills the anticipation of the basketball game. So do, though I do like the replay, it has to be better, bro. Because even like some of the game, the later game, they hit Steve Javi in and Steve Javi would tell you in the first minute or so whose hand was off. What's the right call? But the referees on the court don't hit the same signal for some reason. Maybe they not they aren't seeing the camera angles we are seeing. But God damn it, let them see the camera angles, please. Because I'm trying to see who's going to win this game. Brandon Ingram is probably getting cold now because he's sitting there waiting for the refs. It's just it's bad for the viewing process. Also in this game, we saw a BS ejection. And this happens occasionally in the NBA where you can tell a ref is on a power trip. J.J. Redick was under this ref's skin. He had, he had cursed him out after a missed call, yada, yada, yada. So he got his first technical. Second technical was the weakest thing I have ever seen. J.J. threw a backspin on the ball to give it to the referee, and that was enough for a technical foul. They they released the press, press release of why he got he got ejected, and it said he forcefully threw the ball. Please go back if you have not seen that. Go watch that clip of J.J. Redick forcefully throwing the ball. That is a power trip by the referee. Now, luckily for the Pelicans, J.J. Redick wasn't really a part of the run that they were putting together, so him being ejected didn't hurt him at the end of the game, but we do see it very often. Draymond Green had a terrible, terrible play last night. Objectively, a terrible way to lose his cool in a game where you're up by five with 10 seconds to go and end up losing that game. But notoriously, there has been times where Draymond Green gets a technical foul for just being Draymond Green. These are reputations put on the players, and the refs have these. There's a disconnect between each individual ref and the players, and that was something we saw in game number two. What is a foul and what isn't a foul? Because one ref will look at the same exact play and be like clean, and the next ref will look at the same exact play and be like foul. So that leads us to the second game of the Nasty Televised where Kawhi Leonard drives into the lane. He gives a little bit of nudge to his defender, James Harden, and there's an offensive foul called. Now, we will wait for the last two-minute report for the higher-ups to really confirm if it was a foul or not. But from everything I've seen on Twitter, I even put a poll up to the audience. You should be following me on Twitter. Majority, and I mean a great majority of people, believe that that was a bad foul. And guess what? Out of the three refs that were seeing that, not every one of those refs blew their whistle. Because... There's a disconnect into what's a foul and what's not. This one ref completely changed the dime. It was just it just made the viewing experience of the game again bad. 
If I'm a casual fan and I see this this big old great game and it results in a game tying shot potentially going into overtime being taken away from maybe a foul, I don't I feel some type of way. So the NBA has to figure out how to align everything where there's a uniform definition of every single call. And at the end of the day, I don't think there's any way to actually do that. At the end of the day, I don't know if there's a way to make it more rapid that the that the refs get to see things. But it has to be talked about. And then bringing the challenge was a great idea for the NBA. It was. But how do you bring a challenge into it but not do it like the NFL? If I am successful on my challenge, shouldn't I keep that thing? Like, how? why is there a penalty for being successful? I understand you taking it away when we get it wrong. I understand you losing a timeout when you get it wrong because at the end of the day, you wasted everybody's time. But if I get it right, I should keep it, right? I should keep it. In a situation like that, you would love to have it. You know what I'm saying? But they wasted it. They wasted it. Okay, that's that's all we want to say about officiating. Let me know what you think in the comment section about it because it's just, it was on national TV and it just made the whole thing terrible. I want to take a step back and talk about the Pelicans game more than just the officiating because I was super impressed with a lot of the things the Pelicans did today. They showed they showed this heart. Um, and a lot of it, believe it, this man shot one for seven on the night, if I'm not mistaken. Nico Melli was, was playing very hard out there. I would have never expected Nico Melli to be on the court in a close game like this and actually defending pretty well, rebounding the ball against a team like the Boston Celtics. Now, I guess this is a nice matchup for them because the Boston Celtics aren't necessarily a very big team at the end of the day. But you did see some progress with Zion Williamson being able to have like a bunch of shooters around him because Nico Melli, though he did shoot like one for seven, he's a good shooter. You know what I'm saying? So he had some spacing. Um, Brandon Ingram was electric, and Josh Hart needs to get so much love. I would love to see Josh Hart on the on, on the Bulls at the end of the day, but I, I don't think we're going to get to that point because I do believe that Josh Hart is one of those dudes that every front office would love to have. So I'm expecting the Pelicans to probably bring him back. Um, but just there's so many things in this game that was great. Eric Bledsoe not being on the court for this run and not being on the court for pretty much the overtime where things are really taking over is probably better for them, man. I don't think Eric Bledsoe has that much time left in New Orleans, so let's build around what we have here. And the way Lonzo Ball is shooting the ball recently, um, them trade rumors that you hear probably are going to die. Because if I believe that this is the Lonzo Ball that we are getting, why not extend him? You know what I'm saying? Why not match anything that is thrown his way? Because this man has been hitting all of his shots recently. It has. And, and the boss is Celtics. Brad seems a coach that has a good reputation. And he, he, at the end of the day, he is a good coach. But he he struggles with one thing, and I've seen that a lot this season, where when the other team is on a run, he, he struggles with stopping the bleeding. And at the end of the day, we have a 24-point lead with six minutes left in the third quarter. You should be able to close that game out. You should be able to close that game out. Jason Tatum was a bucket. He makes he – like Josh Hart played amazing defense on him late in that fourth quarter and in the overtime. But some people just make shots, and Jason Tatum is one of those dudes, you know. So, overall, a great game for national TV. Um, beautiful win for the New Orleans Pelicans. And I think I, I can see them growing by day. And, the, and, like, Zion did not have a good game, but he had a good game. Like, the, I would give Boston Celtics a lot of credit for the way they guarded Zion. They made it difficult for him today, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Um, next game that I did not watch, but I'll give a lot of love to Shea Gillis Alexander and Jared Allen for such big games, 26 and 17. It will be a game I'll go back to rewatch, but you keep seeing the, the Cavs skid, and I think when you look at their point differential during this losing streak, they're losing by like an average of 19, 20 points. What the hell happened between the Sexland shirt that I bought to now, I don't know, and I, I will go back to watch this game to try to pinpoint what I'm what I think could be the reason for it. At the end of the day, they they just they don't have that much talent on the roster, so the way they were playing to start off the season it was a big surprise. Um, especially their defense being as elite as it was, but I didn't expect them to fall off a cliff this much. Next game was the 76ers versus Toronto Raptors, and the Toronto Raptors are above 500, y'all. They they did it. They're here. And, and they're on the win streak right now. And this is basically what we talked about before. With even their their early woes, we knew that this is a playoff team. We knew they were way better than, than what their record was saying in the early uh, parts of the season. And a lot of this run has been they have got so much better defensively. They have. I feel like, and I don't know if the numbers back me up here, but I feel like a lot of the losses that the Toronto Raptors got early in the season, teams were hitting shots at a dramatic rate. 
and now things have come back to where they probably should be, and now their defense looks a lot better. Today they held the 76ers to, I think, two points in the last eight minutes, two, maybe two field goals in the last eight minutes. And a lot of that was missed shots by, like, Danny Green and company. <laughs> Not just, that feels bad to say. By the 76ers as, as a whole, but also part of that is the, the, the great defense. I definitely didn't think – um, them starting Pascal at the five technically going small ball against Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid was going to be the right move, but it was. Joel Embiid's final stat line was 25 and 17. He did not have a good game. <laughs> Crazy to say 25 and 17 is not a good game. He did not have a good game. Um, the Toronto Raptors defended him very, very well. They used Aaron Baines very, very well. And even before Aaron Baines had come off the bench, they defended him well. This is just a beautifully uh, a put together game for the Raptors, especially considering how Lowry wasn't there. And of course, he is their captain. He is their heart and soul. So to not have him um, and to get this win is is big. Norman Powell has been very big for them over this win streak, man. Especially with with Cal Lowry being out. So this is exactly what you want from them. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're like the four or five seed with a lot of room to grow. Um, right before I hit record on this video, uh, Coach Ryan Saunders was fired. The first one to get canned this season, right? Yeah, the first one to get canned this season after a loss to the Knicks. Um, this was I have been very critical of the 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 Wolves over the last couple episodes because I always find my way watching them because I do like Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards fun, Malik Beasley fun. They have fun pieces on their team when it comes to watching them. But when I was being hypercritical, I was saying that Ryan Saunders has struggled to draw a plays to get Carl Anthony Towns the ball when it matters the most. I don't know if that was the case today. Something happened today. They were like, you know what? Ryan, we love you, uh, your family, and the organization, but we can't do it. We can't do it anymore. And what made it even crazier is they snagged an assistant coach from the Raptors midseason. Bro, assistant coach um, Chris Finch, I think his name is, I think he also interviewed for the Bulls job earlier this season. He was just sitting on the bench with the Raptors two hours ago, and now he's the head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Shout out to the Raptors for allowing many, many people on their coaching staff to blossom into their own guys. It's beautiful. I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't that good of a person. Y'all just took Nate Brokerin from us. Y'all going to take another one of our assistants? Nah, you got to wait, G. Um, but they're they're great enough to let him go. Uh, Raptors fans probably bittersweet to see another one of your guys leave, but I like to see people to grow. I love to see first-time coaches because I don't know what to expect from Coach Chris F Finch. Right, Flinch? Finch? We'll figure it out later. I don't know what to expect, but he's got to be better than Ryan Saunders. And I'm excited about that. What is his rotations is like? I don't know. And you can't really judge him until you get D'Angelo um, uh, Russell and Carthen Towns on the same on the same court. Um, next, we have the Atlanta Hawks getting a win over the Nuggets. The Nuggets had this little comeback, but it didn't really feel like that much. Trey Young put together a great, great game. And I know people are gonna gonna look at the box score and be like, "Ah, oh, Trey Young drawing fouls." A lot of the fouls that he ended up drawing were like late game foul situation because the Denver Nuggets thought they were still in it. Um, but the foul drawing is a real thing, but today it wasn't really like that. Clint Capella is, is highly underrated. Can I say that? He is highly underrated. The way he defended Jokic today was, was mind-blowing to me. I didn't know Clint Capella, Clint Capella had that in him to hold an MVP candidate the way he did today. So shout out to Clint Capella. Big win for them because they were really struggling early on. And then last game that I got to watch was, of course, Nets versus Clips. Um, it is it is getting to the unfair, unfair territory for them not to have Kevin Durant <laughs> and to not really have that much bench production other than um, DeAndre Jordan, who was very big for them this season, to go out there and get a win. Again, questionable call in it all, but they I think the record is 12-1 versus teams over 500 since the Harden trade. 12-1 over 500 teams. Yes, they lost to the Cavaliers a couple times. Yes, they lost to a couple bad teams. But when, when the eyes are on and they're going against great teams, they can put it together. But I do want to talk about this minutes restriction thing for Paul George because if you didn't know, he, wasn't, he was on a minutes restriction and it was one of the reasons he wasn't out there for the last minute. Bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He should have been on the court. I don't care. I don't care if the minutes restriction. Bro, adding an extra 30 seconds to his final game time was not going to hurt the man. They needed him out there. <laughs> they did. They did. He was dominating today. And we're going to keep him on the bench for the last four minutes because of a minutes restriction? At least put him in with 30 seconds to go when you need a bucket. You got to, bro. You got to, bro. Um, but overall, the Nets, James Harden has been absolutely ridiculous. If it wasn't for the fact that he's playing with Kyrie and Kevin Durant, this man will be in MVP conversations again. Um, he's just in order. He's like averaging thirty and leading the league in assist again. It's like you would expect him to take somewhat of a statistic dip when you're teaming up with two other superstars. 
Now when you're James Harden, God, it's unfair. If DeAndre Jordan is hooping to this level, dog, they they coast him. They coast him, bro. They didn't need any bench production other than DeAndre Jordan a little bit. And they beat up on one of the best teams in the league. Think about that. Just took seven first round picks. <laughs> That's all it took. Anybody could have thrown it, could have thrown that in the hat at the end of the day. It was them, and they did it. All right, that's all I really want to say. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. Call game.